The Muslims brought along with them civilization. Because Islam not only deals with the theoretical aspects of life, but also the practical aspects. And so they found the land fair seeming for the planting of citrus fruits. And they planted lemons and grapefruits and limes and oranges. And the word in Arabic for orange is burtaqal. Ard al It was like the land of the oranges that grew so well. And burtaqal became Portugal. They went to the north in the Russian states and they found a land that you needed to have a lot of sabr, a lot of patience to live in this land. And so it became Ard al-Sabr, Sabriya. And this we know today as Siberia. They went south, down past the Red Sea, into the ocean on East Africa. And they found that the Persians had had a base in East Africa and they called it Maqad Shah, and now we know it as Mogadishu. Musa ibn Beg, Rahimahullah, founded a base on the East African coast, and so Musa ibn Beg's place is known as Mozambique. They went into the ocean and they found the wind blowing and they found rain coming in large numbers. So this Mosim of rain or season of rain became the monsoons. They went into the Pacific, and contrary to the little bit of knowledge that we understand about our own presence in this part of the world, Muslims went into the Pacific Ocean during the Umayyad period. And that we trace as uh, that within a hundred years after the death of the Prophet ﷺ, they went into that region and they found a set of islands, and it was windy area. So he said, Juzul Hawa. There's a lot of hawa, air, wind. And so Juzul Hawa becomes Hawaii. They travel to parts of the world that you may not from the west coast of Africa. And quiet as it's kept, we are now understanding that maybe close to 30% of the slaves taken from, from the, uh, the Guinea coast of West Africa were Muslims. Close to 30%. In Bahia, in Brazil, which was the largest slave population created by the Portuguese. There was a huge slave revolt in Bahia, a successful slave revolt, to the point where the Hausa and the Fulani or the Fula people who, 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 were, who were taken into slavery in that part of the world were able to defeat the Portuguese. They were given boats and they returned to West Africa. And you can go to Lagos today and you can find Brazilian mosques. Which is, which, which is a mosque, a house of worship, built by people who were captured, taken to Brazil, and then won their liberation and returned to West Africa. Even only recently, in, in 1992, it, it was the 500th anniversary centennial of the, the, the age of discovery. But my question was, at that point in time, who was discovered? Was it the people here or Columbus? It was Columbus. That's what they should actually have been saying. But what you, what you have to deal with is the mentality. Not Columbus himself, because Columbus was very late. And, and historians recognize now that many people made it across long before Columbus. That's another lecture in itself. But African people made it across. Muslims made it across. Vikings made it across. Phoenicians made it across. Many different na nations were able to come across the Atlantic and the Pacific on the other side too and come into the Americas. The important point is the mentality. It is, a, it is the mentality where you deny the civilization of the other people. Just imagine this now. We look at the picture and we see Columbus landing on the shore. And he's looking at people. And it says Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492. I tried this out, man. I went to Nigeria, Kenya, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Singapore, and I said to the people, who discovered America? They said, Christopher Columbus. I said, when? They said, 1492. I said, did you look at the picture? They said, oh, that's right. There's other people in the picture. So this mentality of exclusion, the mentality where people are living there, yet you don't recognize their humanity, that is the one that is the poison that destroyed the relationships 
where racism became a tool of oppression and a tool of mental and physical exploitation. And, and, and those of us who truly read the memoirs of Columbus, not, don't, don't just watch the movie, read his memoirs. Columbus knew, he went to, to Iceland first, then he went down to West Africa, and he described dugout canoes, huge canoes going, Africans going across. If you, if, if you look and, and see the people who traveled with him, many of the people who traveled with Columbus and the early Spanish and Portuguese uh, uh, conquistadores, they were uh, what we call morescos. Now what is moresco? Moresco is, we find that in 1482, the Spanish Inquisition began. And in this Inquisition, they would take you to an inquisitor. And they check you out. Are you a Catholic or not? If you say you're not, they'll burn you at the stake. They'll torture you to death. And so thousands of people were dying in the Inquisition. Some people could not take the torture. The Jews were called Morenos, who could not take it. The Muslims were called Morescos. Now what they had done when they were coming down, they, they conquered Muslims and they made them slaves. Is another term. It comes from Mudajjal. Mudajjal in Arabic is, is like, a, like a, a name of ridicule. So Mudajjis. These people were as slaves. And there was rules that were being passed with the Jews and the Muslims would be used as slaves by um, Ferdinand and Isabella and the forces of Aragon and Castilla when they were coming down. And so um, in 14, when Columbus landed on the shore, okay, the people were standing there looking at him. So how can you discover a place when the people are standing there looking at you and they've been there for 10,000 years, they have great civilizations, the Aztecs, uh, the Incas, the Olmec people, the Mayan people.